My name is Elena Tom. I come from the Shladliyam Nation in Shalaf territory. Shalaf and Shladliyam land is unsurrendered, unceded land. There are no treaties where we come from. Today marks the day where I uh, lost my great grandmother. She was 96 years old. Um, a, a week ago, she passed away from pneumonia in the hospital. So um, it's because of her that I came here to bring you this message. <clears throat> Being that our land is unsurrendered, um, we don't acknowledge the authority and so-called so jurisdiction that Canada claims to have over our territory. We don't acknowledge the police authority, um, how they um, come onto our land and, and they make arrests for people who are there to defend our territories uh, and criminalize women, children, elders, youth, land defenders. We were born and raised to believe that our purpose as Indigenous people, as Ufamuk people, is to defend the land. We were brought up that way, that our sole purpose as Indigenous people is to defend the land. We are trained from a very young age to respect the earth that we walk on, the water we drink, and the animals that we eat. Canada is a direct threat to our very existence as Indigenous people. The development that they are approving tears up our mountains, it destroys the water, and it disturbs the delicate balance between animals and Mother Earth. Our families rely solely on the animals that walk the land and the fish that swim in the water and the birds that fly in the sky. Our very existence depends on the rivers that flow through our territories where we collect our food every year <clears throat> and we have to travel farther and farther every year to get our food because of the highways that are being pushed through our territories, because of the resorts that are going up in our territories. All the development that's going on for the Olympics is affecting us, all the encroachment on the land the privatization of creeks. Um, there's a lot of proposals to British Columbia and Canada right now to literally own and privatize all our creeks so we can have this. <clears throat> there's also private power projects that are being um, approved in our territories they, they call it a greener way to produce hydroelectricity, but we all know the damage it does to the land. Um, <clears throat> there was a $500 million, $500 million ski resort proposed for our territory about 10 or 12 years ago, and they wanted it complete in time for the Olympics. Um, Nancy Green Rain, she was uh, an Olympic medalist. She's the one who was pushing for this resort to go through in our territory, which I remind you is unceded, unsurrendered. Shlatli of territory, and we put a stop to that so far. We have gained support all across Canada, so-called Canada, all across Turtle Island, all across the world in order to put a stop to this resort that was being pushed through our territory. And to this day, there's a permanent shelter where our people go and defend the land to stop them from going in and surveying, to stop them from logging, to stop the development. Because all the logging is destroying the berries and the game and the rivers where we live. BC Hydro is another direct threat to our people. They have I'm not sure what they, they're called, but they have dams, they have turbines, they have power plants right in the center of our reserve, and our reserve has the highest toll of death rates caused by cancer, and nobody's doing a thing about it. Like, nobody even acknowledges the fact that our people are dropping like flies from cancer. And every woman in my family has died of cancer so far. 
because the power plant is directly in the middle of our reserve and when and when you walk underneath them you can feel like the hair on the back of your neck stand up you can feel the vibration in the ground and it's just not a good environment for our people to be living in and of course they make nine billion dollars a year and we're probably one of the most impoverished reserves in our area. TELUS, um, I think you're familiar with TELUS, the telephone company has just laid a fiber optic cable in the bottom of our untouched lake. It's a crystal clear lake where we get our salmon every year. Clean water, it's clean enough to drink and they last year they, despite each likely opposition, they laid a fiber optic cable in the bottom of our lake. Um, they say it's so we can get wireless internet, but you know we didn't really care about the internet and we didn't want the cable laid in our lakes, but they went ahead and did it anyway. <clears throat> we instill in our children the importance of preser preserving our culture in order to ensure the safety of our future generations. We sometimes take direct action to defend the land. Sometimes when the meetings aren't the meetings aren't helping. The protests aren't helping. Sometimes when the government goes behind our back and starts surveying the land or destroying and moving in with their machines and the RCMP, sometimes we use direct action tactics such as shutting down the highways, such as shutting down the streets, such as shutting down the government buildings because we need our voice heard. So that's one tactic we use to ensure the future generation's safety in our territory so that they always have access to the land, they always have access to the food, they always have access to the water. And nobody can tell them otherwise, nobody can tell them that they have authority, that they have jurisdiction to tell our children what they can eat and drink in our territories. The land is there for everyone to use. Besides logging, mining is a huge threat to our people all over. It dirties the water and it causes all kinds of sicknesses within the people. <clears throat> Recently we were up in Taltan territory where the shell was drilling for coal bed methane. And we, we stood in solidarity with them to fight their cause against Shell and the, and the British Columbia government. Going back to the Olympics, um, I just want to make a statement that since Shtlatlia land has no treaty signed with the government, it's unsurrendered territory, and the land grab there is illegal. Any commercials you see that advertise any plot of land in British Columbia is illegal. Anybody that goes there is occupying the land. Anybody who's destroying the land is destroying our way of life, our culture, who we are, and who our children would be, will be. I just want to tell you about an elder named Harriet Nahaney who was defending the land, her traditional territory. Um, she was defending the land because the Olympics was pushing a four-lane highway through our territory. There was a place called Eagle Ridge Bluffs where it was a real delicate situation where there was, you know, trees, like the last trees in that area. You know, the last species of certain animals. She stood up and to defend the land to stop the machines from going through, to stop the logging that was going through. And she was arrested. She was in her 70s. She was arrested and while she was in a male prison, she got pneumonia. And um, she was in jail for a couple of weeks and when she got out, she was in the hospital and she had passed away. And I know that she wanted the message sent out to everybody to never give up the fight for the land. And I just want to say that we stand in full support of no one is illegal. We believe that immigration is a human right. Everybody has the right to live here. So we stand in solidarity with everybody who's here for this cause, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Coach Shimkoff.